All right, welcome everyone to this um, edition of Folk and Palette Live. My name is Tinja Young, and this evening my special guest is Joyce Ham, and I am so excited. Um, we're about to just dive into a whole lot of things with regards to this conversation tonight. Um, just her journey, um, growing up in the South, moving to Chicago, to Chicago um, area, and and then um, and then living abroad in the Middle East and living in Lebanon for quite a few years. So we're just going to go ahead and take it away. And we're going to start off with your Southern roots. And I, I got to say, the first time we spoke, so let me give you all a little bit of background here. This was one of the first conversations that I had with Joyce, and it was regarding my 15-year-old son, who is her student, because yeah. she is a history teacher. And in addition to us talking about his performance and his grades and all of that good stuff, some kind of way we started talking about food a little bit. And I, I say all this to say that food is such a powerful tool. It's such a powerful medium of connection. And you never know what you will have in common with someone. So even if it is your child's teacher, if it's someone just at the store, just chat sometimes and you, you'll begin to learn a lot as I did. And this is why I'm so excited to have her on the show with me here today. So Joyce, we are going to start off, we're going to start off in the South. Now, one of the first things you said to me when I told you about folk and palate, you said, I'm from the South. I, I know I'm a white woman, but, but I have stories. <laughs> Yes, that was, that was yes. one of the first things that you said. And we all have these food stores. It doesn't matter our background, right? It doesn't matter our heritage or any of these things. Um, and you mentioned to me when you, you, cause eventually you moved up North, right? You moved to Michigan in the eighties, but when you moved up North, I think, I don't know if it was a conversation with someone that you had, but they were talking about soul food. And let's kind of dive into the South and the food of the South. And then even if you look on, if you want to look at it from a Black perspective or a white perspective, because this person was talking about soul food and a lot of times, and even in with people that I know, with other um, African-Americans that I know, sometimes, sometimes people just think of soul food equates to Black people. And I remember when this person said that to you, you said, that's my food. That's what I grew up on. I grew up on, you know, the cornbread and the buttermilk and all of this. So tell me about your childhood growing up in, in the South. Well, um, my father lived in Mississippi as he was growing up. And then my grandmother, who's from Louisiana, um, and I'm peeling onions right now to make um, My grandmother, who's from Louisiana, um, lived in Mississippi for like 60 years. Mm -hmm. So all I was small, we would go home to visit my grandparents, and then we actually lived there for a few years. Right, and this is Hattiesburg, right? That was Hattiesburg, that's right. Yep. Yeah, Hattiesburg. Yep. And I mean, the things I know about that food are biscuits, cornbread, and buttermilk. This is what I was telling you. I remember in elementary school, we had regular milk and we had buttermilk, those were our options. Mm -hmm. And we had cornbread in our lunch, like our cooked lunch at school, you know, our school lunch. So we used to crumble the cornbread and pour the buttermilk over or drink it. You know? mm -hmm. And the fried chicken and um, green beans that were cooked down forever with and like the smothered green. I mean, all of that, this is what my to cook. Right. So, and pecan pie, of course, and blueberry. I used to have blueberry bush in her backyard. Mm -hmm. and, I rem and when you told me that, that just sparked a memory in my mind as well, because even though I grew up in DC, my parents are from Alabama. And then my mom's uh, mom is from Mississippi. And I remember her telling me how she would have her buttermilk and her cornbread. And, you know, so when you said that to me, it just, it, it made me think about it. Like, it's interesting how people look at something that we call soul food, but we oftentimes we kind of just put it in one little chasm, right? It's just in its own little place. and only associated with with black people with african americans right? right even though it's a whole you know group of white folks down there that grew up on this food so it's just a a whole nother take and even you were talking about growing up in the south now you didn't live in hattiesburg your entire um childhood because y'all moved around a bit right but you spoke about um your grandmother and yeah. you told me just some interesting things but and 
you know, it was the times, right? You know, right. Was, in Hattiesburg, I believe, is closer to the Gulf. It's, it's further south in Mississippi. Um, and the fact that you grew up in a community that was not very diverse. So tell me about just, I guess, your perspective of your grandmother from what you saw as a child and growing up in a community that really did lack diversity. Yeah. So my grandma, um, wonderful, wonderful, giving, loving woman. Like, I, I want to be like her in ways. Um, she was, like you said, a product of her times and mm -hmm. a good, believing Christian woman, but who had that sort of, and I, I, I can barely even say this, but I don't know how. Just that, say it. It's like, fine. <laughs> that, like, sweet racism, you know, that, like, mm -hmm. Sweet old lady that, okay, I love you. You're a Christian too, but you belong over there and we belong right. here. Right. And that's kind of really what I knew as far as race relations, um, except for you know, the, all the scary stories were told to me or whatever, fighting in high schools, black and white school. Mm -hmm. um, then I had like one friend that had um, a black maid and into her house, mm -hmm. I saw her at the door. So, um, yeah, it was a divided and separate society, right. um, except for the food. And that's what, uh, that's what strikes me is that, you know, we all ate the same food and so right. many, and so, so much of our food was the same, I guess is what I should say. Right. But we didn't go to the same school. I didn't have any black students in elementary school. Right. Uh, I went to junior high to us and so then we were a more integrated junior high school mm -hmm. um, but I had two amazing teachers a fifth grade social studies teacher mm -hmm. 